is a matter to be decided. A decision on whether or not legal action will be taken to reclaim the church's property is expected early this evening. Edinburgh is doing all day in Inverness to consider the schism which is splitting its 6,000 members. The, div div the division emerged since the Wee Frees disciplined their senior church elder, the Lord Chancellor Lord Mackay of Clashfern, for attending the funeral of a Roman Catholic friend. Fourteen ministers who'd objected to the disciplining have broken away and formed a rival association of Presbyterian churches. Now, as Alex Thompson reports from Inverness, the main church body has decided to set up a special synod to lay claim to all church properties and prevent breakaway ministers holding on to them. Outside the Free Presbyterian Church in Inverness, and divorce proceedings begin. Synod members of the hardline faction arrive to press their claims on manses and churches, a sober gathering which could result in evicting ministers of the opposing faction. The divisions have cut deep. It has caused considerable disquiet, even within families, even between man and wife. The simple, strong singing of psalms, familiar to all members of the divided church. Its few thousand adherents are scattered widely across the glens and villages of the highlands and islands, now deeply divided in a split which had been growing for many years. The Mackay affair was the last straw. When he attended the requiem mass of a Catholic colleague, hardliners suspended him till he repented. He refused, resigned, and nearly half the church's ministers went with him in sympathy. But militants, led by men like the Reverend Donald McLean, are amazed that a member could even contemplate attending a Catholic funeral. Reverend, you, you speak of the, the Catholic church almost as if it's some sort of threat, an enemy. Well, uh, our view of it would be that it, it, it is um, the greatest perversion of Christianity that is known. And therefore, uh, uh, people are very apt to be led astray by it and to say, well, here is Christianity, whereas we would regard it as a perversion of it. So you would take the view, therefore, that, uh, that Roman Catholics are not Christian at all? I would take the view that a practicing Roman Catholic is a Roman Catholic but not a Christian. practice at Inverness Golf Club, an unlikely setting for a re religious inquisition, but a glance at the match board reveals that play is permitted here on the Sabbath. Recently a free Presbyterian was disciplined for belonging to the club which allows such activity, even though he'd never played on a Sunday and had been given life membership anyway when he was a boy. More seriously, a Sutherland minister, the Reverend Alex Murray, a regional councillor, attended a committee meeting where prayers were said by a Catholic priest. For this, he was suspended and his salary was cut. But now, after siding with the moderates, the Reverend Murray is not welcome here anymore. In fact, he's locked out of his own church by militants. I used to get into the church that way, and when I came back on Saturday evening to close it, I didn't need to close it because... <laughs> Obviously, it had been closed already. Hardliners like the Reverend Donald Boyd say he'd mixed with idolaters and should have known better. If Mr. Murray had uh, ex had expressed that, uh, had expressed regret, and had said that this was uh, a, a mistake on his part, uh, the Christian Church, being what it is, it knows how to forgive, and he would have been forgiven if he'd repented. If he had repented. But Mr. Murray was holding out on a matter of principle, and therefore the Christian church had to deal with it as a matter of principle. Now the principle of austere church discipline has split families and villages as it's split the church itself. The Reverend John Ross, a moderate, walks past the church in Loch Carron where he preached for 18 years. His brother's still an elder there, and now even his name's been erased. I actually... Uh, took my name off the notice board basically it was because I felt it would be rather a painful thing for some of the friends that I left in the Free Presbyterian Church in Loch Carran to have to do. Uh, um, my brother is an elder in that church and I would assume that, that that would be one of the duties that would fall to him and I just removed it to make it perhaps somewhat easier for him. 
and now he and his family live with the threat of eviction, depending on what comes from today's synod. Meanwhile, he preaches to two-thirds of his congregation who've come along to the other end of the village, where he's been given use of a Church of Scotland building. The Church of Scotland's also learning this kirk in, in Inverness, where with the moderate faction, the Association of Presbyterian Churches have gathered to worship. Psalms sung with no organ, weighty sermons and simple solemnity, identical to the services of the hard-line Free Presbyterians. But these people left because they believe matters like attending a friend's funeral mass are matters for individual liberty. We believe that the church over a period slid into neglecting that part of its constitution so that it closed down on that liberty and virtually excluded it. So if you shut out that liberty, then you're left just with rules. A little after five o'clock this afternoon, the Reverend Donald McLean emerged from the Synod. No, that situation, the situation that will continue is that those ministers who are in their former churches at the present moment, uh, no legal election will be taken against them. But the threat of possible eviction still remains for moderate ministers. A small church is now carved up into two even smaller factions in a bitter dispute in a land littered with the relics of vanished congregations. Alex Thompson, ITN, in Inverness. Well, just back to today's main story, the one-day train strike which has paralysed the rail network. We've just heard... Uh... Neil Kinnock has branded them leave their church homes or face legal action. The move came after elders of the church held an emergency meeting in Inverness to consider the bitter split that's developed among its 6,000 members. It began when the church disciplined its senior elder, the Lord Chancellor, Lord Mackay of Clash Fern, for attending the funeral of a Roman Catholic friend. The simple, strong singing of psalms, familiar to all members of the divided church. Its few thousand adherents are scattered widely across the glens and villages of the highlands and islands, now deeply divided in a split which has been growing for many years. Practice at Inverness Golf Club, an unlikely setting for a religious inquisition, but a glance at the match board reveals that plays permitted here on the Sabbath. Recently, a free Presbyterian was disciplined for belonging to the club, which allows such activity, even though he'd never played on a Sunday and had been given life membership anyway when he was a boy. More seriously, a Sutherland minister, the Reverend Alex Murray, a regional councillor, attended a committee meeting where prayers were said by a Catholic priest. For this, he was suspended and his salary was cut. But now, after siding with the moderates, the Reverend Murray is not welcome here anymore. In fact, he's locked out of his own church by militants. I used to get into the church that way, and when I came back on Saturday evening to close it, I didn't need to close it because... <laughs> Obviously, it had been closed already. Now, the principle of austere church discipline has split families and villages as it split the church itself. The Reverend John Ross, a moderate, walks past the church in Loch Carron where he preached for 18 years. His brother's still an elder there, and now even his name's been erased. I actually uh, took my name off the notice board, basically because, because I felt it would be rather a painful thing for some of the friends that I left in the Free Presbyterian Church in Loch Carron to have to do. Uh, um, my brother is an elder in that church, and. I would assume that that would be one of the duties that would fall to him. And I just removed it to make it perhaps somewhat easier for him. Meanwhile, he preaches to two-thirds of his congregation who come along to the other end of the village where he's been given use of a Church of Scotland building. The Church of Scotland's also learning this kirk in, in Inverness where the moderate faction, the Association of Presbyterian Churches, have gathered to worship. <laughs> 